Human life without death would be something other than human. Consciousness of immortality gives rise to our deepest longings and greatest accomplishments. Lee and Kratz. The one promise we all have in this life, regardless of religion, race, creed, sex, influence, or power, that we all know to be true, is that one day, no matter how much you've accomplished or how little, there will come a time when you will die. Death is unavoidable. Yet we ignore it. We pretend as we go through our day-to-day -day life that it's not a matter of time. That we pretend by looking away, the reaper will not come to collect. I understand that some of us have had family and friends closest to us stripped away abruptly without warning. It's part of the reason why we deliberately ignore and avoid discussing death. But I believe the biggest driver in our attempt to escape death is our fear. We choose to fear one of our biggest similarities. We choose to fear our mortality. The fear of death is the fear of the unknown. We don't fear death itself. We fear what happens after. With no confirmation of what happens after death, at least none that scientists can verify, this causes us to fear death. We fear the unknown to such a point that even getting closer to it creates a crisis. It's the reason we fear aging as we age, growing up, graduating high school, then college, getting married, becoming a parent, then a grandparent. These are all moments that can bring joy and happiness, but at the same time, they can become fear. Because death is our, aging is our ladder to death. And as we creep ever closer, we are reminded of what's around the corner, how much time we have left. Because of our fear, we attempt to escape death and pursue immortality. According to Oxford Dictionary, immortality is the ability to live forever, eternal life. This definition does not specify the technicality of immortality, so we can understand this in two different ways. First, not only will you never die in it of old age, but you would not die in any way we currently do. Then a more doable scenario is second, where aging is stopped. Something scientists and humans have been working towards forever. With immortality around the corner. According to Opie Watch L, the period for achieving immortality is within the next 30 years. They speculate that immortality will be achieved by the year 2050. So, how could immortality be achieved? Gloria A. says that there are three options that present themselves, three possibilities. The first, biological immortality. Biological immortality already exists. It's possible when, a when an organism is not affected by cellular sentience. Its cells don't age, they divide infinitely, keeping the organism systems healthy and alive. One example of this is the so-called Toridogio. And I'm sure I did say that wrong, but its more common name is the immortal jellyfish. Its cells don't age, and at the same time, they rejuvenate themselves when needed. For this to be achieved, human scientists would have to apply the biology of animals like the immortal jellyfish to a much more complex biological system therefore superseding aging and our mortality. Second, cybernetic immortality. Technology exceeds what was thought possible and allows us to extend our lifetime forever by replacing failing systems in the human body. Step by step, we effectively make ourselves cyborgs. For example, if you have COPD or asthma, we could replace your lungs with metal ones. Heart disease. Don't worry, we will have a machine pump your blood for you. Knee pain, you could have cheetahs that make you run faster than a cheetah. Through cybernetic enhancement, we effectively circumnavigate death and become something beyond human. And then, the third option, the scariest, virtual immortality. Technology, we upload, our brain into the cloud. Live your perfect life. Live in your own reality. No pain, no stress.
struggle, no hardship. You could even forget your life and live again inside your own world. Who knows, in your new existence, they will build a virtual reality in there, making it so you can live in a virtual reality inside a virtual reality. The scariest part about this is how close we are to achieving it. The researchers uploaded the brain of a much smaller organism, a worm. Project Open Worm could be our path to immortality. After mapping worm's complete nervous system, scientists stimulated it digitally into a like, robot. The robot started moving, responding, and acting just like a worm would. Now, the difference between a worm brain and a human brain is vast. But with enough technological advancements, we might have to one day make the choice. Red pill or blue? So what? What if tomorrow comes and aging has stopped? News headlines hit. Immortality achieved. What then? Well, C. Custer speculates that, C. Custer states, immortality with technology would only be open to the extremely wealthy. It would be the most expensive commercial product in human history. So not a single person in this room is affording it. The rich and powerful will hoard a never-ending life Custer speculates that this will widen the gap between economic classes and after the price falls, will lead to death slaves. People willing to do anything to live forever, to avoid staring the reaper in the face, willing to sacrifice their humanity so they don't have to die, willing to sacrifice everything it means to be human, to live. And even on the off chance that and how it did become open to the public. The consequences of this would be severe. It would force us to ban reproduction, otherwise we face an overpopulation epidemic. This would mean no new eyes to view this world, no new ideas or perspectives. We would stop new life from being brought into this world so that we didn't have to leave. We would stop children from being born because we're scared. We would effectively murder all future generations so that we didn't have to die because we're scared. We forget, but often the ones who change the world are the newest to it. When we are born, we have so much creativity and imagination. And as we age, we are expected to conform to society. The creativity and imagination are ripped out of us. We don't need those. We become materialistic. We base our values on material things. In life, as we age, we become more focused on what society expects of us, what criteria we have yet to meet. This controls us. And there are very few individuals that ever escape this cycle why it is so important to pass the torch down to the next generation. Otherwise, we trap ourselves in a vicious, selfish cycle. We limit our potential because of our fear, and we prevent our future. With the invitation of immortality, we leave the goddess here. The beauty of this life is that one day it'll be gone. One day will be our last and we don't know when. It brings meaning to every moment. We often don't realize it, but death is the very thing that gives life meaning. As the saying goes, you don't know what you have until it's gone. You can't experience happiness without experiencing sadness. It's the duality in life. If life was always blissful and happy with no struggle or hardship, we wouldn't have a standard on which to base happiness. We wouldn't understand why happiness is so amazing. It's only in the sad moments that we really miss the feeling of joy. The same is true for life without death. We wouldn't understand the beauty of life if we knew it would always be there. A study by Sarah McKay showed that when people are directly confronted with their mortality, such as a near-death experience or severe illness, the four, the four more coping mechanisms of extrinsic goal breaks down. 
and through efforts to rebuild their coping strategies, people reevaluate their status oriented goals and shift towards more intrinsic ones, such as pursuit of personal growth, positive interpersonal relationships. This ultimately leads to a more meaningful, more positive, better life. This st study directly shows why our mortality is so significant to live life's meaning. If upon realizing our mortality, we are more likely to live lead more positive, more meaningful lives, then the opposite of act must hold the truth. But those who act immorally and ignore death tend to lead life trained of meaning, without purpose. As Oscar Wilde once said, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. When achieved, immortality will be the most significant event in human history. And if not gone, and if we go through with it, we risk ruining what it means to be human. In the pursuit of a never-ending life, we ultimately destroy our future and everything we're meant to stand for. We fulfill our selfish desire and ultimately end up destroying it.